All right. Hello and welcome back to Tom Q's Tech Tips. Today we're looking at one of my my favorite topics, which is using an iPhone basically as a production camera. And so we're calling that the Pocket Studio camera. Um, we're going to compare five apps. Obviously, with the name like that, we're giving a tip of the hat to the the relatively new pocket camera app by Blackmagic. Actually, they just called the Blackmagic camera app, even though th this would be the very first camera that truly fits in the pocket. But um, this one basically goes into a crowded uh, field of apps that offer clean HDMI, which is the only truly necessary ingredient for using your iPhone as a camera for production on a switching environment. Um, for a number of years, I've been using my iPhone as my primary camera for a video switcher, which originally I had a roll in the V1 HD, but then I made the switch to ATEM, the Blackmagic ATEMs, when the ISO models came out. So um, I've been using the Apple Lightning to Digital AV adapter to get the HDMI out of the iPhone and the iPad. And then I've uh, thrown into the mix for audio um, the Apple, it's now discontinued, but the Apple iPhone dock. And what that'll let you do is get the lightning to HDMI out, but then also let you get audio in with something like the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now, in my last conference, I actually did this. I used a Wireless Go 2 going into a Zoom PodTrack P4 into my ATEM. But then I also had a second set of Rode Wireless Ghost 2s to, re, to, to have a backup record inside the phone. And because of the two microphones, it turns out that I, I really wanted to be able to mute one of the microphones at certain instances. And because this little setup does not let you do dual channel record, I had some additional uh, mic input that I did not want. Now, of course, in post-production, I could go back in and add the internal records on top of that. But anyway, I'm trying for as little work as possible. Now I'm now looking for dual channel. And it turns out there is a way to do it oh, with the iPhone 14 Pro and earlier. And that's with the Lightning to USB 3 camera adapter. So you plug your, your, your microphone into the USB port and you can get the dual channel audio. But then how are you gonna get the video into your ATEM? Well, it turns out you can use one of the newer Apple TV 4Ks to transmit your, your video into the ATEM wirelessly. Now enter the latest iPhone, which um, is basically here and being talked about all over the place. But basically with the iPhone 15 Pro, which I do not yet have, you, we can have our cake and eat it too. We can have USB-C hub where we can do the dual channel audio in. We can have the HDMI out, clean HDMI out. We can have monitoring. We can have Ethernet. We can have SSD recording, the whole deal. So now, now we just want to, I want to pull up a little chart and then we're going to compare five apps, five of the seven that we initially showed on the screen. All, all seven of those uh, have the most important feature, which is clean HDMI out. Um, so that's a re that's an absolute requirement. The the other two. So we're uh, again keep in mind that the topic here is using the iPhone as a pocket studio camera. So in my situation, I'm actually kind of a one man show where I'm doing a lot of the recording and the the streaming and all all the things. So that's going to be a few of the features that I want to pull in here. So clean HDMI out is an absolute requirement. Another requirement, which the two apps I'm not including actually have, is in-camera record. So being able to record a backup inside the iPhone is just a nice feature to have in case something goes wrong with the whole, the whole ATEM setup. 
which is, you know, it's not going to happen every day, but it's one of those things that's not 100% foolproof. So I like to have that record inside the camera. Uh, Shoot Pro actually doesn't have that, but I've included it here for other reasons. Um, you might ask, why, why in the world did you include Air Mix Solo, which used to be live to air? I've included it because, first of all, it was for a while the only app on the market that I know of until Filmic Pro did it to offer clean HDMI out. So I, I, I actually used it for recording for a couple of years in conferences. So I'm including it for that reason. And then we've got one more reason down the road here. So next category is the dual channel audio record. And I honestly don't know if Airmix Solo has that. I do know Filmic Pro can do it. I do know Movie Pro can do it. And Blackmagic Camera can do it, and it also offers four-channel record, which I'd love to see somebody do a video on that because I'm not I, I'm not sure how we can actually take advantage of more channels. Anyway, Shoot Pro might actually do that. I just have not tested it. Okay, dual camera record. So what would this? What is this? This is the ability to record internally to the iPhone with more than one camera. So Filmic has a separate app that does this, but it does not have clean HDMI out, so it's not in the discussion. Uh, the only app in the world that I know of that has clean HDMI and lets you record with, let's say, the, the normal camera, outward facing camera, and the selfie camera, or the the zoom lens and the normal lens would be Movie Pro. Now, um, some of the features that I'm about to talk about, the remote control of move of the apps does not work with this feature activated, but it does have this feature, and it's an it's enough to make me think about Movie Pro for certain situations. Remote zoom. So I usually put my iPhone in a fairly conspicuous place um, in front of the speaker about 10 feet back. And so I don't really want to have a camera operator sitting in that seat. I want it to be as inconspicuous as possible. So I, I've been using either Filmic Pro or Movie Pro, and most recently Movie Pro, to be able to remote zoom the lens of, of the iPhone from my seat, which is off to the side. Up until recently, the 1.2 version of Blackmagic Camera, this, this would, would have been a no. But they have just announced support for the Tilta family of, of uh, controllers. Anyway, the one that interests me is the Tilta Nucleus Nano 2, which by itself runs about 169. And so I'm having to give this a yes, and I'm also having to give Black Magic some extra consideration that I have not done before. Which brings up the next column, which is remote pan and tilt. And you'll notice that there is not a single app that supports that. For years, I was lobbying Filmic to add that to their repertoire, and uh, they gave me enough hope to to uh, to continue to harass them about it. And you might have seen a video that I did a while, uh, about a year ago where I, I discovered a hack that will let you do this using Switcher Studio and a DJI Ohm Series gimbal. So it's actually quite a bit of fun. I did use this in my last conference using... I was actually using Movie Pro, but using the, the Switcher Studio hack, um, which cost me $50 for a month. Um, so it was quite expensive. And it mostly worked. It worked for a day and a half. And then I had a one of the speakers where I had to do a lot of moving back and forth with the, uh, with the gimbal. And the motor gave out. So I'm kind of writing that off. It would work, I think it would work well if there were not cables attached to my iPhone. But it was just enough to uh, put stress on the motors. In comes this relatively new to the market gimbal, which you've probably seen a video about if you're interested in gimbals at all, because it's 
taken the world by storm with its AI tracking. So automatic tracking with the AI, which that one particular speaker, I definitely am going to have him use this because it will perfectly track the speaker if they're one that moves around. So anyway, the Hohem iSteady M2, MT2 is designed for much heavier cameras and can definitely handle the iPhone with cables coming out. All right, so remote iOS app. That is how I've been doing the remote zoom, the remote exposure, um, uh, just the different things that you might want to do remotely, white balance, things like that. You can definitely do that with Filmic and with Movie Pro. Now that I actually have the Filmic version 7 subscription, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, I actually prefer it to Movie Pro, but the last couple of years I've used Movie Pro because of the whole subscription pricing of uh, Filmic. There is no remote app for Blackmagic. I do find myself hoping a little bit that there might at some point be the kind of control to the Blackmagic camera app that they offer for their hardware cameras. Something that I can control through the ATEM software. So if they ever make that move, I will make a permanent switch to the Blackmagic camera app with the Tilta or whatever other options there might be by that time. But the Tilta Nucleus Nano 2 control for zoom and focus is an option as well. Um, remote app, remote watch app. So Filmic offers this and it's, it's actually quite nice. If you're having to move around away from your other devices, having the, the preview on your wrist. And if you've forgotten to turn the recording on, you can actually uh, launch that from the watch. Movie Pro does have it. It's, n it's not as responsive, but it does have it. Anyway, I, it's in some cases kind of unusable because it loses the preview. No such app on Blackmagic at this point. Probably never will be. Um, Shoot Pro. And I forgot to mention it on the remote iOS app. They do offer this, but it is a part of a paid subscription, the remote app. The Watch app actually is available in the free version. And it's quite interesting in that it's the only Watch app that allows zooming exposure and a few other things from the watch so anyway I, that's one of the reasons i've included shoot pro in this in this mix here but the the other is this the, the way that they've implemented the remote control apps for ios and for our next category which is remote mac app uh, which could theoretically be also for pc but um I only care about Mac because that's what I use. But anyway, the Shoot Pro offers this remote control for a subscription fee because it involves a server on their end where you're doing this over the internet. Anyway, that's got my wheels turning for Blackmagic with their cloud service may potentially offer something through their cloud service, but the only Mac app that I know of besides the Shoot Pro is Movie Pro. So they've basically checked a box that lets the iPad version of their app work on M1 and above series. The developer, however, is an iOS developer, so it does not work perfectly. And he's basically told me that he's not a Mac developer, so can't fix some of the issues that have come, in, come up. Like if another app gets layered on top of Movie Pro, then the zoom feature doesn't work until you disconnect and connect the camera again. So anyway, there's not really a remote app, Mac app, but got my fingers crossed for Blackmagic camera for basically the ATEM software control. That would basically push me over the edge for Blackmagic if they were to come out with the control of the iPhone through the ATEM software control. All right. Audio over HDMI. So I'm always looking for extra records just in case something goes wrong with one thing. If there's another record sitting there somewhere, it's just all the much, all the better. So 
Um, if nothing else, it would give you something to synchronize, let's say, the internal records to the Rode Wireless Go 2 or the Wireless Pro. Just enough information to synchronize it to your video record. So Filmic does offer this. I have gotten it to work with Movie Pro. I've got a little asterisk there because you have to actually tap an icon a couple of times to make it work. And then Black Magic, I've had mixed results with it. I didn't think it was working with the clean HDMI feature where it was working with their text overlay feature. But then the last time I was tinkering with it, it did it did work. So and I've and actually listening to some of the recordings, the Black Magic recording sounded the best, but I haven't listened to the recording on the one where I actually got it to finally work in the clean HDMI out. So anyway. This next to last column is one reason why I have AirMix Solo in the mix here. And that is because it offers streaming. And so why am I interested in this? It's because I, I this isn't actually for the conferences, but I, I, as I've been working with this, if I could have, uh, let's say a remote guest in a YouTube podcast scenario using their iPhone to record themselves if they could stream that to me then I would potentially as the cameraman be able to control some exposure and stuff like that over the internet so it's just a, a feature that the AirMix Solo has that got me thinking about how this could be implemented in some of the other things and then the very last thing we want to talk about is price and of course Black Magic Camera has the unbeatable option of being free. Um, Movie Pro would be a, a very close second in that even with the remote app, it's around $10 one time, one time purchase. And then finally, Filmic has pretty much lost its audience forever, it seems, except I'm, I'm actually making a case for it here. Right now, if I had to do a conference with one of these five apps, it would be Filmic Pro. Um, I picked it up after my last conference in a back to school sale for $20 for the year. And I will say that stability wise with the remote apps, it's the best option. So being able to control my camera from far away, the smoothness of the zoom, the stability of the remote app, Filmic, at least in the scenario, in the condition that it's currently in, which with them letting go the original employees of Filmic, the new owners letting them go, I don't really see them making leaps and bounds of progress with this app. But as it stands now in late 2023, if I had to choose one of these five apps, the way I use it, I would choose Filmic. But I have an intense eye on Blackmagic Camera, and I still have my eye on Movie Pro. I've used it in the past, it's done the job, and I'm grateful for, uh, for having had it for such a reasonable price. So if I, had to, if I had to use it again, it would not be terrible. AirMix Solo is free uh, unless you want to record, and then it was a $10 fee, which at the time I paid them just out of gratitude for being the only app that did this for a number of years. And then Shoot Pro, if you just needed the clean HDMI out, that would work. I've basically included it here because of the remote, the over the internet remote control. So just adding that to the discussion of being able to control the app over the internet. Don't necessarily need that in my conferences, but could definitely it's got me thinking for doing some of these remote. I think we've got some remote conferences coming up. So it had definitely had me thinking so anyway that's all i've got for you today i thank you for tuning in to tom q's tech tips and hopefully we'll see you again soon if you have any questions you can leave them below thanks again and hope to see you soon bye now <laughs>